I'm joined by Michael McDermott. This is a, a, a movie about hope and people hopefully winning on a topic that's interesting. You know, there's only about 2,000 fluent speakers left of the Cherokee language, which of course Oklahomans know about Cherokees right here in Oklahoma. And Michael and your team are at Dead Center with a documentary about this, looking very forward to this. So people, activists trying to make sure a language doesn't go extinct. And it's not like war games or something like that. This is a real documentary about a real existential threat to a language, and they seem to be winning. Welcome to our conversation. Tell us all about how you got into this and what you learned in the process of making this documentary. Thanks for having me. Um, I am the co-director of this documentary called Dadi Wilnisi. Um, that's the Cherokee word. Uh, the translation is we will speak. And it is about the activists, educators, artists, families, um, elders of the Cherokee um, who are fighting, uh, really fighting to save the language from going extinct. Um, due to generations of uh, assimilation by the governments, uh, boarding schools, trauma, uh, the language was not passed on um, for a long time. And uh, you mentioned there's fewer than 2,000 speakers. I believe that number is even lower right now. It's around 1,600, I believe. Um, so my journey involved in this film uh, started uh, in 2018 with my filmmaking partner, um, Jacob Kessler. Um, we have made short films together um, uh, and they've largely revolved around issues of language. Um, and we were setting out on a project, uh, a sprawling project about language, uh, little tidbits and idiosyncrasies about language in general. Um, and we uh, knew about the story of Sequoia, um, probably the most famous, uh, one of the most famous Cherokees. And he's credited with uh, creating the Cherokee written language, um, the syllabary. And he's the only person in recorded history that has created a written language from uh, not being able to read or write another language. And that tidbit, in fact, is interesting enough on its own. And, and we decided, you know, we wanted to investigate that. Um, and we were going to make a, a little short about that. So we went to um, North Carolina, where the Eastern Band of Cherokees still reside and met some folks there and, and spent some time building relationships. And, you know, there was a, a, a few folks there, including one named um, TJ Holland, who's uh, unfortunately since passed away, but he was really instrumental in um, this film getting its legs because he said, you know, uh, yeah, Sequoia is an interesting story. It's in the past though. Um, we have a really important story, um, a dire story uh, the, of our language uh, on the brink of extinction. And we sort of used that as a retooling part. And we talked to TJ, he sent us to Oklahoma. We spent a lot of time in Tahlequah making relationships. And we met Sean Duncan, um, one of the United Ketua um, members of Cherokee. And uh, Sean really opened our eyes even further to the, uh, the dire nature at hand. Sean had devoted uh, his adult life to language revitalization efforts. He was in the Master Apprentice Program in Cherokee Nation and uh, really just, you know, focusing on um, how he could help. So he came on, came on board our project and um, he's the co-director of the film and he has just helped us open doors, show us where to um, go, uh, that sort of thing, and and uh, helped with translation efforts and everything like that. So we brought Sean on board and soon after um, artist Kelly Gonzalez, who's a Cherokee Nation member, and, and she is a producer on the film who is in the film and also um, has allowed, you know, access to her family in the film. So we spend time with her grandparents uh, who are both fluent speakers and just um, talking about their stories, uh, their experiences in boarding school, how they um, really 
believe in the Cherokee language being passed on and so on and so forth. So um, through intimate stories, this film really bloomed and uh, over a lot of time. So we filmed from 2019 to uh, the end of 2021 um, into 2022. So we spent a lot of time and uh, we did a lot of collaboration together. Uh, I don't think this film would exist in any other way. So that's the, the long and short of it. It's a very progressive nation. Uh, Principal Chief Hoskin is familiar to most Oklahomans. They have a film office. It's an incredible tribe. And I'm wondering this, this threat to the language. And you had said to me previously, you know, a couple of years ago, you might not have thought that they were winning this battle, but you think they are. Is this something that is, you know, fairly, uh, a fairly wide and deep concern for Cherokees? this language going away i i absolutely believe so um i in my experience um everyone we talked to that you know we were um explaining why our cameras are around when we talked about um the issue of language loss and us trying to document that they would immediately understand and say this is a, a very needed story um you, you know, it's in the nick of time almost uh, that these efforts are are happening. And I do want to praise um, uh, the, the tribe, and that, that goes for all three tribes of Cherokee. Uh, the language preservation efforts seem to be a, a priority for all of them. And, and with the new language center in Tahlequah, the Durban Feeling Language Center, I really see things exponentially um, getting better in the future. It does seem to be a concern. And unfortunately, um, it's not just a concern for Cherokee. Um, native language loss is an issue across the board with so many tribes. And um, an effect that I didn't anticipate um, too much was that once the word of this film got out, um, that we would be contacted by different tribes that were saying, can we show our, can we show your film uh, to our people because we're having the same issue and we want to jumpstart interest and, and get this language revitalization journey going. Uh, so that's been a, a side effect of, of the film and a, a super important one. So it's not just important for the Cherokee folks. Um, it has wide reaching, unfortunately, uh, wide reaching um, potential. So you'd mentioned the three, uh, three tribes, three different nations. Is that the way I would put that different bands? Yeah. Three sovereign tribes. Uh, there's the Eastern band in North Carolina and the United Katuas and Cherokee nation in Oklahoma. Can you help us understand how the three of them together are, what sort of tools they're using strategies they're using to preserve and expand the language? Sure. Um, I think the biggest one is uh, an investment. I mean, you have to, um, uh, beyond knowing that it's important, I think you have to show that it's important in different ways. And uh, the first comes with investment. And so there's the, um, the new Durban Feeling Language Center that I mentioned, which has uh, a master apprentice language program. It has an immersion school where children um, ages three to, to um, nearly high school age, I believe, are uh, immersed in Cherokee all day. And beyond that, I think showing that it's important in the community in different ways is, is uh, vitally important as well. So um, our producer slash um, subject in the film, Kelly Gonzalez, like I said, she, uh, is an artist and uses her art to show, um, and she uses Cherokee, the language in her art. So she does a lot of mural work lately and she paints a mural in the film. And that mural is in a, in a public school where there's a large population of Cherokees. So just an exposure to the language and showing um, children, a lot of times young people, igniting the spark and showing them that this language is important to uh, your heritage, but it's also part of your identity. And 
Uh, our film tries to explain that connection as best we can. Um, some things I think, you know, are just intrinsic to the um, the way that the, the, the people function, but um, the identity and language uh, connection is, is huge. So explaining that and making sure children know that it's uh, a part of them, I think is uh, really uh, one of the biggest things that, that uh, bodes well for the future. Getting down to the end of our time here in just a moment, but I wanted to to go back to something you said early on, you do a lot of it, a lot of documentaries, films dealing with language. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a tease to help us understand what it is that drives you and what about languages and some other things that you've done that would find interesting in terms of languages and why this subject that has you and your team um, involved in such art. Sure. Um, this is our first feature length documentary so it's by far the biggest project that our team has worked on but uh, we've made several short documentaries in the past and um, the one that i'm most proud of um, is a documentary uh, called strawberry forever and it's about my father um, and my father has aphasia which is a language disorder and it's something that uh, a lot of people don't understand and uh, it, essentially it severs the connection between the language center and the brain and the expressive nature of it. Uh, so it doesn't affect intellect at all. Um, it usually occurs after a traumatic brain injury of some sort, a stroke or an accident in my father's case. Um, but then your language center never, never fully heals. So there's always an expression problem there. And so we made a, a documentary um, about that, about my father's life. Uh, he's, he's dealt with aphasia for over 50 years. Um, and he always told me that he wanted to tell his story in a way. And once I started getting into film, um, I realized that that was a ticking, uh, that was ticking in my core, um, helping people understand this, um, especially because it is something that, uh, is so often misunderstood. So we made that short documentary. It's uh, available on YouTube. Um, and, you know, it, it uh, was very successful in, in uh, reactions to it, especially from the aphasia community, um, just feeling represented. Um, so I think that that was a great project to lead into this one in certain ways where uh, there's a sensitivity that has to be in place. Um, there's there's a beauty in letting people of the affected communities tell their own story without much hand of the author, so to speak. So um, just turning the camera on and allowing my father to talk um, and however long it took him to express those things, um, that was a good primer. But uh, yeah, this project is also uh, curated with the same sensitivities of, you know, making sure that we weren't stepping on anyone's toes uh, that we were allowing the communities to actually uh, tell their own story in an unfiltered way. Um, and so that's why it was, you know, tantamount to have um, the level of collaboration uh, that we do on this film. Like a lot of Americans, the first he'd ever heard of aphasia is when Bruce Willis, his family announced he wasn't doing films anymore. Exactly. Google got a lot yeah. of work on that. Mm -hmm. Um, this was a collaborative effort. The folks that, uh, who are some of the folks that helped to get this done? Um, I'll shout them out again. Jacob Kessler, um, Sean Duncan, Kelly Gonzalez, Laura Heberton, um, Colby Looper, um, Rory Crittenden, um, and just a, a myriad of other people that allowed us into their homes, uh, allowed us to film events that you know um, were personal and where they were vulnerable um tj holland like i mentioned in the eastern band dakota brown um director of uh education in the uh eastern or the museum of the cherokee indian in north carolina um if if anyone watches the credits to our film they are super important and 
we just deliberately displayed every single person that we um, encountered because honestly, everyone who um, touched this film is, it made it possible for it to exist in its current form. So it's really for the communities, uh, by the communities, ultimately. Michael McDermott is the uh, co-director of uh, We Will Speak. And Michael, do you know the when your film is going to screen at Dead Center? I do. Um, it screens on Saturday at, I believe, 4 p.m. at the Museum of the First Americans. And then it screens on Sunday as well. And I'm not quite sure of the time on Sunday, but I, I know it's... Um, it's at um, the Harkins Bricktown on Sunday. I, I think it's uh, 1230 on Sunday. We appreciate what you've appreciate done. What Look forward to seeing done. your movie. Thanks so much. I appreciate this quite a bit. Thank you, Michael.